All right, everyone. Guess what? It's interview time. And we are here with repeat guest, Ray McDaniel. Oh, my God. Did I say that right? Yeah. Yes. Sweet. I was going to say McDonald. (laughs) Nope. (laughs) I was getting nervous. (laughs) I answered for Ray. I was like, yes, you did. Yeah. Good. I'm so glad. Uh, And yes, and we're super happy to have Ray on our show. Um, They've been here before on episode 227 called Gender Book and other there's other things that come after Gender Book. (laughs) And uh, we just love Ray's intellect and everything that Ray has created and shared and continues to share because Ray wrote a book called Gender Magic. And I'm already sold in the, the book title just because all I need is some magic in there and some gender. I'm cool. And I love it. Also, there's the word shameless in the subtitle. So I feel really good about that too. <laughs> and uh, Sex Geek Summer Camp last year, so it's 2022, you were in the living room in our same little house that we were, we were living in for a couple of days. I was only there for 24 oh, wow. hours. So I'm like a drive-by human at Sex Geek Summer Camp. But you were there <laughs> working on this book in, you know, in that moment. And you know, we were already working on ours and this is not about ours, but but separately, but like I was able to just like go and not and I was seeing Was this di- last year? Yeah. And it I was, was last seeing, year, yeah. Like twenty twenty two. Yeah. Yep. I was seeing Ray's dedication to this and I was you were yeah, telling super me about this. excited. I was like, Oh my god, your book's coming. I'm super excited about this. So um, this is going to be a, about the book, but also just about some important topics regarding gender magic, also self love, how to really like discover yourself as a sexual being, as just uh, a, a, a human that uh, is unique in this world, and how do you find that part of you and really accept that and, and share that with the world and find your community and all the things. So, even though we shared a little bit about you in our bio, a little a little blip, can you please tell our listeners how you got to where you are today in the field of sexuality? Absolutely. So I'm super excited to be back and, you know, putting shameless in the the subtitle was just a ploy to get back on your show, really. Sweet. It worked. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yes. We love Victory. you. We love you. Victory. <laughs> I love it. So my road to get to where I am today is kind of long and windy. The too long don't read is that I grew up as the adopted child of fundamentalist Baptist missionaries. Um, there's some more layers to that that I'll, I'll leave to readers of the book. But I <laughs> I grew up in a very oppressed environment where my family didn't talk about sex at all, but I was very curious about it and have always been curious about it. And then grew up, started having sex when I was about 18 and it hurt a lot. And I didn't have any sort of language or any sort of knowledge around what might be happening with my body, about basic sex education. I tried going to therapists. I tried going to doctors and none of it really worked very well. I mean, eventually it did. And I feel very, very good about where I am today with my body. But it was truly a journey to find pleasure in my body. So I think that paired with, I started doing therapy, focusing on the LGBTQ population very early in my career. That's what I went to grad school for. And I had all of these trans clients, you know, I've been working with trans folks for for 10 plus years now. I had all these trans clients who were coming to me, asking about sex and talking about sex and relationships. And pretty much without fail, every single one of them would bring up the topic of sex And so I decided that I wanted to learn more about it. So I went and became a certified sex therapist so that I could bring that education and that training to the the work with my clients because I knew how hugely impactful it was for me. I love that. I I feel like it's uh, like right now in the world, I do feel that there is some movement happening, some sort of like shift with people. I watch the Oscars and I watch the Emmys mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh my God, it's finally happening. Like people are starting to accept and understand, not fully, but mm-hmm. you're, you're, I can't wait to talk about your book. But anyway, I just, I'm thinking, um, I want to have gratitude for you, Ray, and, and your process and also who you are and what you're bringing to the world, because I think what you're doing is magic. No, <laughs> but, um, that wasn't even intentional. It's just, it's true though. So, um, so I, so my question here is what is the gender freedom model? Great question. So as a therapist, I was working with all these trans clients at the same time that I was going through my own transition to a non-binary identity. And I got super frustrated because all of the literature that I was reading and pretty much all the media that I was seeing as well was all about 
how hard it was to be trans and all the suffering and the anxiety and the self-doubt that goes into that process. And those things are true, right? That's not coming from nowhere, especially in our current political climate. But I was also seeing this other side of it where I felt better than I ever had in my life. My clients were thriving. They would come in and talk about these experiences that they had with gender euphoria and in particular, a lot of gender euphoria that was happening in their sexual relationships and in their romantic relationships. And I got curious about, well, where are the people who are talking about this side of it? And where is the research and the literature and the conversation about how we can support trans folks in transitioning and exploring gender in a way that is a lot easier, that doesn't center suffering, but centers thriving and where they want to go. So I created the, the gender freedom model, which is based on my own experience, my work with clients over 10 years, and a lot of research, not my own primary research, but research that I read in a number of fields, obviously mental health and sexual health, but also educational theory, trauma, human centered design. And it all started to, to come together after sitting in my living room for weeks surrounded by sticky notes. Mm -hmm. And I created a model that focuses on play, pleasure, and possibility and isn't a linear model of do this and then do this and then wham, you're trans. But a how do we explore ourselves from the lens of we are all moving towards authenticity, or at least I hope that we are. And what does it mean to explore our authenticity from the lens of gender freedom and looking at how gender has impacted our life and how we want to name and express our gender going forward? So I'm curious about how this, because I, I assume that this is all linked. So my next question is going to be about, and, and I and also I want to say, I hear what you're saying. You see here a lot of the stories or what you saw represented in media was a lot of the struggle. And, but then it's like, but how, you know, how do we, how do we deal with that? Or how do, how do people deal with that? Um, or, and not just deal with, but like move forward, move, move through, move beyond and rediscover themselves in a really positive way. And so I'm really curious about how the gender freedom model can actually help people with things like this, with anxiety, with self-discovery, um, with not knowing who they are, self-love, you know, how does that show up there? Maybe it's not just a gender freedom model, but you know, what are the ultimate tools for, for those really challenging pieces, especially for trans non-binary folks? Absolutely. So one of the things about the gender freedom model is that the base of it all, I think is applicable far beyond just gender freedom to freedom period. So it's a lot of things that might feel familiar, things like moving towards body respect versus body love, which is a big one. A lot of trans folks get the message and people in general get the message that we need to, to love our bodies and ourselves, you know, in order to love somebody or to have somebody love us. Which is very extreme, right? It's like all it's or nothing. It's very extreme. Yeah. yeah. And in the world that we live in and in the bodies we live in, we're not always going to have days where we feel great about our physical bodies, but moving towards respecting our bodies and treating them with kindness, compassion, regardless of how we feel about how they look. That is a core piece of it, accepting the body that we have, even if we might want to change it in the future. Another key part of the gender freedom model is operating from a place of curiosity and play. And this is huge because when we operate from a place of curiosity and play, we're literally in a different part of our brain. We're in the part of our brain where we can think, where we can make decisions from a more grounded place where we don't feel pressure or we're not in this fight, flight, or freeze as we're trying to discover more about ourselves. So there are a lot of tools in gender magic that teach people how do we tap into curiosity? How do we tap into play? And a lot of it is around tiny steps. Now, we get very, very stuck in our head, especially the clients that I was working with they would get stuck in their head for sometimes years about big questions like, am I trans or do I want to make this change to my body? And 
it's largely not helpful to stay stuck in our head about these big questions and what really moves the needle and helps people feel way more grounded in the process are taking tiny steps towards what they are curious about. So for example, if somebody is curious about, say, using a new pronoun and they're not really sure if they want to do that or not, they might start with talking about themselves to themselves in the mirror with that pronoun, asking a, a trusted friend or a family member to play around with using that pronoun. You know, if someone wants to change how they show up in the world, maybe how they dress, then choosing a, an item of clothing that feels a little out of their comfort zone, but not so much that it causes extreme anxiety and walking your dog in it around the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So these little things that help you tap into your intuition and help you tap into your yes where then you can build on those experiments in a, a very organic way, instead of getting so caught up in, is this the right thing for me? It simply becomes, does this feel good to me in this moment? And if the answer is yes, then what is the next thing that might feel good for me? Those are a few things of many that are, are mentioned as tools. You have a and whole book. So. <laughs> I have a whole book. Yeah. It's a whole thing. I mean, this is this is a thing. So it's inherent self-worth, right? This the, yes. the in, Inherent self-worth is something when we have genuine self-love, worthiness is a huge piece in so many parts of existence as a human being. Okay. I can't speak for my animal. I don't know his self-worth, right? But like, I know about worthiness and sometimes self-love and genuine self-love is the only way you can get there. So what I'm getting to here is how can people navigate discomfort, right? Because especially in this, in this realm and celebrate their inherent self-worth um, and develop this self-love that we're all searching for. Oh, such a juicy question. I love it. <laughs> so good. The first thing to remember is that discomfort isn't harm. And there's two sides to that coin. There is the side of discomfort isn't harm when you are making choices about how you want to express yourself to the world, when you are exploring different parts of your identity, any big change or any shift in your life is going to cause a little bit of discomfort because it is unfamiliar to you. That is not harm. On the other side of the discomfort is not harm coin, often when people start expressing their gender in different ways, asking to be called new names or new pronouns or asking for different things when it comes to sex, it makes the people around them uncomfortable. And that discomfort can be taken on as, well, I am a burden or I'm not worthy to, to have needs, to be uh, Lucy Fielding in Transsex puts this really well of desirable and desire able, mm -hmm. right? I am mm -hmm. worthy of being desired and I am also worthy of desiring others and having needs and asking for those needs to be met. Mm -hmm. That is probably one of the biggest mindset shifts that I think makes such a, a huge difference. And I, I tell a story in Gender Magic about I was on this work retreat thing in the mountains of Tennessee. And as part of the re experiential retreat, they took us up on this 60 foot dam in the middle of the forest. It was an old dam. It, there wasn't a river there anymore, but they had some belay ropes attached to it. And our exercise was to climb up this rickety ladder to the top of the 60 foot dam, sh like scuttle along the edge of about a three inch ledge to the middle of this thing and then jump off of it. And I'd I'm have been an like, adventure. nope, nope, nope. I'm, like, <laughs> yeah. I'm out. I'm out. I'm like, how First tired are they? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, I am an adventurer at heart and I'm like, I'm down for this. And I got about halfway up the ladder and my nervous system kicked in, right? My hands started getting sweaty. I, my heart was beating out of my chest. And I'm like, what am I doing? I'm about to jump off this dam. But the thing that was so impactful to me in that moment was the person in the middle of the dam who like hooks you onto the rope right before you jump off said, repeat after me, even though I don't feel safe, I am safe. Mm. 
And you could tell that you are, you know, you're supported, you're in a harness, you have this rope on you, it's attached to somebody at the bottom, even though every single cell in my body was yelling at me that I was going to die. I wasn't. And I was able to take the leap with this deep self-trust of, I feel safe enough to make this leap, mm -hmm. even though I, my body is not reacting as though I am safe. And I think carrying that lesson into this realm about inherent self-worth and, and how do we move forward when we're uncomfortable is being able to look around you and really assess, even though I don't feel safe, am I safe? Do I have a community of people? Do I have a supportive partner? Have I done enough work to be able to handle whatever hard thing that I might be faced with? Mm -hmm. And if the answer is yes, you can trust yourself to make a leap that feels a little bit scary and, and trust that you're going to be okay at the, the end of it. I think that's a really big one. I, I like the the contrast between safe or and safe enough. And I think it goes hand in hand with what we were saying earlier, like the all or nothing idea of sex, relationships, gender, uh, essentially like the, you know, not the idea of non-binary that a lot of people are um, identifying with and experiencing and have been probably for ever. Um, and now there's just, yeah. you know, there's a, there's a term or, or a label that will continue to shift. Um, and, but you know, it's not this like brand new thing that like people are, there's, there's a whole, you know, it's, it's a continuum, you know, maybe we could say a spectrum, but the spectrum is still one side and another side and in between. And it's this continuum. And I, so I like the idea of like, I'm thinking safe ish, you know, like yeah. be, you're still being real with yourself, but like, and I think that that's a hard thing to do at least for myself, I'll speak to, to me when I, my brain wants to go to the all or nothing, you know, to mm -hmm. decide instead of like, but what's really true here? Am, like, am I safe ish or am I leaning more towards a safe side or something like that? As opposed to just like, it needs to be safe, unsafe. That's it. I must accept myself or not accept myself. I must love myself fully or not love myself. Like what, what are all the other pieces that can happen in there that, that, and I'm, and I know that your book answers all these questions. I'm so excited for uh, the world to receive your gender magic. Um, and just your magic. You said something though about like the community part, you know, the relationships mm -hmm. piece, which I think is more challenging for uh, or challenging for a lot of people. Um, they don't have community. They don't have to, yeah. because that happens yeah. all the time. You live in the middle of nowhere and it seems like you have zero open minded folks in your area and you want, and this is even outside of anything that has to do with you know, gender orientation, just like sex positivity, making new friends, but also like like-minded, open-minded folks. And then bringing it back to more like a gender orientation, sexuality conversation. You know, what if you're that person, right? Or you don't feel like you have access, you want it. You know, what do you do? This is something that is dear to my heart because I grew up in Louisiana and then went to school in Texas in a very small town in East Texas as well for college. And so there is a lot of my life where that was absolutely my environment. And there's this giant and here. There can often be an assumption that because you're in a rural area or because you're in the South or somewhere that's just a bit more conservative, that there are no people who get it. There's nobody out there who is like you, who shares your values. And I would like to encourage people to uh, interrogate that a little bit and to watch those assumptions. You know, I, like I said, I went to school at this tiny little conservative college in East Texas, very much felt like there's hardly anybody here, minus my core group of theater friend kids who, who get me, who share the same values as me. And I, I leave, I go to grad school and I was asked to come back down and speak at that town a few years ago where in this same town, tiny little Texas town, someone had moved in and some of my friends from, from college were friends as, with this new person who created a, a pole dancing um, workshop, not workshop, but whole studio mm -hmm. there. And since I left, a, a gay bar popped up and I went and I spoke to this large group of people, like probably at least 70 to 100 people about sex positivity, about gender in my full queerness. And it was so embraced and it was such a beautiful moment of even in the middle of this tiny Texas town, there were pockets of people 
that just needed a reason to come together and needed an opportunity to come together and support each other. So I, I like to question, is it true that there's really nobody there or do they need an opportunity? Do they need a space? Do they need a way to connect with each other? And in the, the realm of the internet now, that is easier than ever. So there might be people there that you don't necessarily know about yet, but they're there in, in all the areas of the country. I, I the, love that. Right? I yeah. love that creating space, yeah. creating space, yes. like knowing that it exists. Thank you. Thank you. Because it's so true. And we get stuck in our bubbles. We're like, here's my bubble. Well, that's just, it. That's get, all there is. Yes. And well, then you, you, get, you think it's like, no, this is only how it is. You, I, you I see I, it shift and change. Yes. It's endless. Mm-hmm. I have, so just a question. I know April has a question for you too, but for the folks who live, so there's one about your community, but you're talking about on, the online thing. So yeah. what are your top recommendations Good for people question. who want to go and maybe expand out into the online world, even if it's not people that are just in their exact town, but might be like in, you know, in Chicago or San Francisco or that's a better example. What's close to some place in the middle of Minnesota? Oh, Minneapolis. Uh, how about Duluth? <laughs> Duluth. Yeah. Duluth. How about I, Duluth? That was, is, I was like, Duluth. Yeah. Yeah. Duluth, yes. yeah, there, Duluth is, yeah. Yes. So there, but so there might be in other areas or communities. Um, so what are your kind of modalities or platforms are you aware of that are, are doing a good job? There's a lot of really good ones. Lex is a good one for queer folks who are looking for community. It's also kind of sort of a dating app in the realm of Craigslist. Just L-E-X. Just L-E-X. 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 That's a good one. (laughs) I mean, it it, it grew out of personal ads. So it's it's kind of a cute platform. I also really like feel the the dating app Field's awesome we love that's f-e-e-l-d we love feel dot yeah. c-o yeah dot c-o yes, yes. yeah, yeah they're big big fan of field and they are one of the most inclusive dating apps that i have seen there are a ton of sex positive people out there oh should i not have said no no, no no you're great <laughs> amy, just, amy loves field yeah too. i have okay. had some experience with field so april's giving me the, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay good <laughs> Good. Um, and, and I also see a lot of people on there who are in partnerships and may not really be wanting to expand in a sexual way, but are wanting to build community. Mm-hmm. And I see that more and more on dating apps of people saying, I'm putting myself out there because I want this thing, this sort of connection. So I encourage people to view dating apps, not just in the realm of sexual and romantic connections, but any sort of intimate connection you're looking for, including friends. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are are using it that way. Other thing, I mean, there's a a ton of apps are out there, right? There's her, there's, you know, okay, Cupid and Tinder. There's something to be said sometimes about those. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Right. Lots of tools for whatever, whatever you might want. There are, are websites that are more kink centric, things like FetLife, which has has good parts it has bad parts right it's it's both but one of the the biggest places that i personally have found community is traveling to conferences traveling to things like sex geek summer camp um, if you're a sex educator um, there are conferences and conventions for everything under the sun that you might be interested in And some of my most lasting friendships have been me getting out of my geographic area and finding connections with people at these kind of specialized conferences or conventions, meeting like-minded folks, and then really putting effort into maintaining those relationships, which is kind of the the key thing on the back end is not just meeting people, but, you know, having FaceTime dates, planning trips together together you know, go to a cabin in the woods for a little bit, whatever it may be, there is always an opportunity to create community, whether or not it happens to be in your geographic area. Yeah, I like that. I like that. And the suggestions are, I think are really legit because even you have a cabin in the woods, even if you're in LA, okay, you could drive out to Big Bear and get a cabin in the woods. Okay. Hey. Yep. We're at a cabin in the woods. Let's go hang on the beach or yeah. walk in the woods. Well, that's true. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You were talking about like the maintenance part, right? Like it doesn't just, yeah. like, where's my community? I click a button and I meet people and then it happens. You have to spend time building it too. I also think this is the best time ever in the ages of humanity, right? That we can have access to people from anywhere at any time. We couldn't do that 
50 years ago. We couldn't do that 25 years ago, really. Uh, not as not as not as instantaneously as we can now. So we had a really good example of the COVID days where we're like yes, it, we, we were very grateful for online technology to connect. Could you imagine yes, if, that were, if that were the 90s, we would have all like started like just like yeah, eating each other's arms or something. We would have been feral. I know I would have been feral. Yeah, I know how myself April's running around the streets and looking for for sure. Snack. <laughs> <laughs> me I mean, a snack meal. like a sexual way too, like a good snack. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got what you throw down. <laughs> um, so great. <right. laughs> so, and, and I'm I'm grateful because you're from the Midwest, or you live in the Midwest. I know you're from Louisiana yep. originally, but I grew up in the Midwest, and I'm so thankful that there are like more. I, f- I feel like things are expanding more and more. And I said something earlier about the mainstream piece where the mm-hmm. Emmys, like there's folks that are being recognized more. And I don't know if it's forcefully. I don't know. I'm not on the back end of that side. I'm just happy that it's more inclusive. I feel like there are more people recognizing gender, like gender equality is more important on people's roster of things rather than like, well, we're just going to have this movie that, that may, or, or uh, music creation. And so that's a sort of a side note, but I, I was taking note of that this year specifically, as opposed to, cause I'm a huge um, consumer of media. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Guilty as charged. Imagine okay. that. Imagine it. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> I love it. I eat it like it's fucking, I don't know, cheese and I can't eat right. cheese. I'm dairy, lactose intolerant, but it doesn't matter. So <laughs> it's true. My, it's, it's true. So um, I, I feel like we're getting somewhere that is better than we were before. And I'd love your opinion on that at some point. But I want to ask you a solid question now that is more tangible for folks out there listening, because mm-hmm. I think it's really important because play always comes in. These are those three play. P's that you were talking about earlier. Exactly. Three P's. Yep. So the, yeah. the, basically, what you, you created this beautiful methodology, if you will, right? Yeah. So let's talk about the play the pleasure, the possibility. So what are some more practical... You gave some practical tools already, but if people want to align their gender identity and expression to be their most authentic self, what would you suggest? It's such a rich topic and there's so many things that I could talk about here. I'm going to zero in a bit on the the pleasure pieces because, you know, shameless sex podcast. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good tie-in. First... I think building a pleasure practice, and I know this is something that that y'all talk about, is creating time and space where you are intentionally cultivating pleasure in your life and in your body. And this relates to exploring gender and transitioning your gender because we learn about our yes when we learn about what brings us pleasure. So when you are drinking even a, a you know a hot cup of tea and your whole body is like ooh yeah that feels good or when you have an opportunity to explore your body a little bit more and have some solo pleasure you know what feels good when you're exploring your body in that way and the more you're able to tap into that I call it your your gut yes the more when you feel that yes in other areas, including gender and gender euphoria, the more you were tuned into that. So a lot of people when they're talking about exploring trans identity will focus on the dysphoria piece. What do you not like? What do you want to get away from? And what we know from research is that focusing on what we wanna get away from puts us in the part of our brain where we're more likely to feel helpless. We're more likely to feel frozen. We're more likely to get into fight or flight. On the the other side, when we're experiencing pleasure, it's a completely different part of our brain. We are not going to stop and smell the roses when a saber-toothed tiger is chasing you. Not the time, no. (laughs) And if you did, you were probably not our ancestor. (laughs) (laughs) Good point. Yeah. So being able to tap into this pleasure and this yes, it helps orient you towards what you are moving towards. And that is such a a big piece of my work. And it it ties in all three of the P's, the play, the, the pleasure and the possibility. What do you want your life to look like? When you imagine having gender freedom in your life, the point is never gender freedom, period. The point is always gender freedom to blank. 
right? What are you free to do now that gender is not the thing that consumes your brain all day long? And when you are able to orient exploring gender and maybe transitioning gender, if that's something that you want towards what you want your life to look like, what thriving means to you, that gives you a much, much stronger point guiding light, if you will, that does create a bit of magic for mm -hmm. folks. I walk people through an exercise called the the 10 year in the future letter, where it, it's kind of exactly what it sounds like mm -hmm. is you write a letter to yourself of today from the you 10 years in the future. Mm -hmm. And you just describe your day. It's very simple, but you describe your ideal day as your 10 year in the future self, no holds barred as far as what that could look like. And people write it and that's the end of the exercise. There is no, and now you do these things. It's just write the thing and read it, read it multiple times, you know, read it once a week, read it once a month. And what I found is when people started orienting towards, I have, I can imagine what it looks like to feel free, both in gender in sexuality and in my life in general, they organically started aligning their life more with that 10 year in the future version of themselves that they imagined with ease. It didn't come with all of this drama. It just felt really natural because they had had an opportunity to imagine it. And that is, that's powerful. I love that. That's like I, I do that. Yeah. That's like what, that's what manifestation is really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not that exactly. unattainable. If you can, if you can think it, you can have it. It's a whole thing, right? Well, I'm also like, and, I feel like if you could think it, it's a part of you too. You're, you're tapping into this thing that actually there's, there's truth or something. I always knew I was going it. to space, dude. I'm going to space. April's going to outer I knew, space. I, I, I she also might run this. for president Since I was someday. little, I knew, and I knew it. And I'm like, this is happening. I knew what was going to happen. So just saying, it's not, it. it's not far off from everyone is accepted for fucking who they want to be yeah. and who they are deep inside of themselves it's not that far from going to space either because people are like that's not. fucking wild no do you you can be whoever the fuck you want to be how about that do you invite people to also so like if i write to it 10 years away amy but also like it sounds like something that'd be cool to revisit like every year you know like 11 years oh, yeah. away, amy, or i guess every time it would be 10 years away amy from each year to see and then compare the stories be like wow look at how far i've come and celebrate yep. that right that sounds so i mean i don't know i made that up but that sounds cool like you were t this is like a timestamp of your your vision, and you know, you're saying your you, the results you've seen is that people start to really embody that uh, that which they dream of, and not just dream of, but like that they know is true for them. Uh, so mm -hmm. yeah, I'm. Can I do that? We should do that every year, Chip. That's going to be our New Year's resolution every year. I love that. Yeah. And yes, absolutely. What's your we'll credit multiples. you? <laughs> yeah. Perfect. I yeah. stole it from somebody else. So yeah. Oh, perfect. Well, whoever I, knows is we love I it. think I was when I was younger, I envisioned the person that April was. And I think I'm like more kick ass than I ever thought I would be. Yeah. But I did have this vision of myself. Yeah, it is. And I also it took manifestation what you're talking about, Ray, where I wrote down the things that I wanted in my life. And I didn't read them as often as you're suggesting. And I think that I should, but I did mm -hmm. come across some previously written pieces <laughs> from what I wanted. And those things have happened. So that is no matter what you're doing out there and you're listening, what Ray's talking about doing is that's powerful writing it down. I mean, if you want to type it, type I write now and it does give me a little bit of like that, er, like my hand starts aching because I never write actually physically. Like yep. yeah, I never used to write the way we used to. I know, but I'm like, it's it's powerful to write. And I'm like, how do you spell that goddamn thing? My autocorrect's always on fleek. So anyway, now we have injuries in our wrists from typing. So yeah. <laughs> I don't know Ray if you that right in your book. Because you yeah. wrote a book. So, you know, probably Ray's all the time. And us and had a like really good desktop the whole time. <laughs> I don't yeah. know about that, but yeah. <laughs> well, with that said, um, I know we've talked about your book a lot, but can you tell us a little bit more about your book? Maybe some things that we haven't already shared that people can expect. Is all you of this in going to be in the book? Because I all actually, it's in the book. The yeah. gender magic is the title, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep. And yep. and so and it encompasses all of this that we're talking about. But yes, I because I, I, I yeah I want to. And I, 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 other just addition to that question is. 
you know, who is this book for? Is it for everyone, you know, regardless of gender or sexual interest or orientation? Um, so, or, or is it specific? But yeah, so these are my questions and April's questions. But bam, here you go. <laughs> Got them all. The book is for anybody who has felt like they were shoved into a box of gender at any point in their life and really wants to explore what it's like to have more freedom in their life in that aspect. So I wrote it specifically with a trans and non-binary audience in mind, obviously, and I was very intentional in how I wrote it so that anybody, whether you are an ally, whether you're a gender explorer, whether you're somebody who just wants to understand a bit more about uh, what gender freedom means in our culture, what it means to you personally, can pick up the book and learn how to be a better ally, learn some mindsets and skills to support their loved ones, while also getting a lot of skills and food for thought on how to explore gender for yourself. And I'll give you an example. One of my editors was reading the book and she is a, a cisgender woman. And she started talking to me about, you know, I was doing these exercises just to see how they felt. And I discovered that I am, in fact, a cisgender woman. And more than that, I love this version of femininity, which for her was a, a very kind of typical version of femininity. She loves dresses and makeup and heels. And she's like, I have never felt more intentional about how I show up in the world than I do right now because I had never really considered the choices that I was making. And now that I have the option to choose something else and how I show up in the world, I realize how much I enjoy my presentation now. Mm -hmm. So there, there's an intention to it that I think can be very helpful. It is a book with a lot of mindsets and core concepts, but it doesn't leave you there. I also did that very intentionally. I don't think staying stuck in our head and, and just thinking and having our, our mindset slightly shifted is going to really move the needle. I think it's about getting out there and trying stuff and experimenting and playing. So there are a lot of exercises and very practical ways that you can explore gender and sexuality and possibility in your life throughout the book. I'm missing some of your other questions. There were oh, a few of them in there. We threw a lot. Yeah, you. there was a lot. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and well, it's not, no, you, I think you answered it because it was like, "Who is this for?" You you stated mm -hmm. that as and well. Where can we get it? Yeah. And these are new questions because <laughs> oh yes, yeah, so they they are actually. Um, so because I believe it's out now, or is it on the precipice of being out? Remind it's me. It's out because, May thirtieth. Okay, so when we're recording this, it's not out. However, I believe well, right. This, I think this episode's out. It's out. Okay, it's like, so yeah. good. So you can okay. get it now. And yeah. where can people get it? And you know, and the best way also to contact you, work with you, because I know you do coaching mm -hmm. and you do a lot of wonderful work uh, with folks all over. So please, and anything else that's exciting that's coming out. Not that this is an exciting. When's your next book coming out? <laughs> yeah. If someone asks, me, I like, no, like never. That, that, no, I start twitching. Do you desk. start twitching? Yeah. Yes. I'm like, oh, I start twitching. I can't do it. No. <laughs> Too soon. Too soon. Yeah, too, um, way too soon. So people can find me. The hub is on Instagram, which is the Ray McDaniel. That's Ray R A E. You can go to the link in the bio and find out all about the book. You can join my mailing list if you want to know more and find out some ways that you can support the book if that's something that you're interested in. And you can buy the book everywhere books are sold. Mm -hmm. uh, so your favorite local retailer is always, you know, a, a a thing of choice for me. I love supporting local businesses, but you can also get it on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, all the things. Um, and I do not know when my next book is coming out. Oh, I'm yeah. going to focus that's on okay. this one. But do, yeah. do not. Yes. Do not. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy about that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's where you can find me. You can order the book. I put out a lot on Instagram about where I'm going to be at, places that I'm speaking, ways to connect with me. Feel free to reach out on there. I do read those messages. Uh, so that's a, that's a great place to connect. Mm -hmm. You're such a fantastic human being, and I'm so grateful. <laughs> Thank you. Every time you're met on the show, this is I'm always leaving our conversation just feeling more whole and just 
better about, I don't know, about like giving access to folks out there that don't have the access that they need, the tools that they need. And it makes me feel really good that you're doing the work that you're doing because it's not easy, you know? And you, it's yeah. like, it, this is your, your, putting into creation what other folks might not know that they need right now or later, or whatever. And I just feel like you're, you're also normalizing things that should be already normal. They're, <laughs> they're not yet. And, uh, yes. So thank you, Ray. Thank you. <sighs> thank you so much for having <sighs> me. It is always a pleasure. And I love talking to you two anytime I get the chance to. We'll have you back. You don't need to put Shameless in your next book title. Just saying. I mean, uh, but if you do, you know what? We'll be fine with that too. And it is, it is such a shameless approach. Gender Magic is a brilliant title because we, when we were when we were going through titles, I loved the magic in really things. Magic. Yeah. And the publishers were like, well, yeah, we love magic too. And Amy's like, I don't know. You know, Amy's like already just blessed in magic all the yeah, time. So I yeah. say that's not true, everyone. I'm not. I, you know, you, I'm no, a she magic didn't act unicorn it all the time. Um, 24-7, always magical. And that's true though, because uh, for everyone in uh, what your book is talking about, like what I'm, at least what I'm It hearing, is magic. What, what Ray's book is yeah. Yeah, you're talking like it magic doesn't necessarily mean like this like hippy dippy wooey where's no. the wizard stuff, you know, like more so no. like no, you we're all magical. We actually I believe that we all are in a way. We just have to really be able to like embody that and have the tools to be able to move forward with knowing that we are that. Um so yeah, I just really think I that. think that you're exactly. you you deserve the magic in the title that you created more than um we you know, we didn't. You're more magical than us, basically. You are. Oh. You are. So, That's a very high compliment. That was, I was. You. I was getting that. I was like, okay, it, it's right there. And gender magic is so beautiful. So everyone, go check out Ray McDaniel's book, Gender Magic. Mm -hmm. uh, and thank you again, and thank you to all of our beautiful listeners from anywhere you're listening on the globe, and any of the continents, and any of the cities you're coming from, and we love you. We really, really do. If you have time, I'm just inviting you to do a review. It helps folks out there, wherever they are, find Shameless Sex. This is a free resource. This is free to you. And it's because we love you. And we also want people to know that they're beautiful, no matter who they are. You're beautiful, no You're matter beautiful. what they say. They, uh, you are. <laughs> I and you there was like, that. I, no, I'm not saying shit. No, I'm not saying <laughs> shit. I'm just saying, like, I this, I just like, ah, I just love humans. I do. And the moment that even when someone cuts me off in a fucking car and I'm like, fuck you. They're you know, magical, when I get mad, I'm like, they're magical hey, too. I will love you. <laughs> and I'm just saying like, That's it's, awesome. it is like, let's like just move forward. And it's, we're all here together on this planet, planet Earth. So let's love each other more. Check out Ray's work for sure. And uh, review us on iTunes, on Spotify, five stars. We love. And we do read every single review, um, even if it's an emoji. I'm like, what kind of emoji is that? Squirrel. Is that a, is that a spit face emoji? I don't know. <laughs> um, but I still like it. Uh, and then, yes, I guess uh, the only other thing I have to say to you is that, again, you are my everything, Amy, but you all that are listening are our everything's too. So Aww. We love you. We'll see you next Tuesday. Ciao for now. <laughs>